So today we're going to talk about the finest piece of Japanese furniture making ever to have a lens put on it and that is of course the Worcester Field camera. So this is the video on the Worcester Field camera set to the soothing sounds of my next door neighbour angle grinding holes in his Triumph Spitfire. But before we get started, I wanted to say thank you to a couple of people in particular. Thank you to all of you because you've been really supportive and I'm glad people are enjoying these videos. But thank you in particular to Doug who said, I really enjoyed your videos. I want to say thank you. So I want to send you this 120 to 54 film holder. So this would allow me to take six by nine pictures using one of these cameras. I wanted to say thank you to Jan Marco for sending me this roll of Fujifilm. I will get around to using it. I want to do something special with it, so I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do with it yet, but I will definitely let you know when I do. Someone also sent me these three rolls of Ektar, but there was no name in there, so I don't know who you are. So thank you, whoever you are. And if you want to send me your name, I'll thank you personally. So, the Worcester Field camera. Now, there's a saying that a bad workman blames their tools. Well, that's probably because a bad workman either doesn't look after their tools or has bad tools. The Worcester ethos just takes that to a whole new level. The idea is that if you have beautiful tools, you're going to create beautiful work and beautiful art. And these cameras are traditionally made Japanese woodworking and they are phenomenally accurately built. They are absolutely beautiful. You can buy them in rosewood, cherry wood, or ebony, and it's all about the beauty of the materials. The brass is just lacquered, there's very little varnish on the wood, and everything is just lovely. Photographically, they've got some really great things going for them as well. The ground glass on the back is the brightest ground glass I've ever used. I can use this thing in daylight without a dark cape. Whereas looking through something like the Linoff is kind of like staring down the end of an upside down tunnel. And it's quite frustrating when you're trying to focus. This on the other hand doesn't have the vignetting, it's just a lovely ground glass. They also work very nicely with their movements. The way you can see the way the camera's moving is really nice. The Linoff's much more mechanical, um, whereas this, you've got little notches to tell you when you're in the middle, and you can just move it, and I just like the way it moves. Pop that back in the middle. The same goes for the tilt at the front. That's not the tilt, <laughs> that's the, uh, the riser. <laughs> the uppy downy, as it's technically termed. Well, I've shown you how that one works. Um, if I can reach around here, I can't see it, there we go. There's my tilt. So the camera itself, it moves nicely and it's very, very nice to use. For this camera, I set myself a challenge. I'd heard about an old pier that was built in the 1920s that was still there. It was once the longest pier in the world, but is now totally forlorn. I wanted to find that pier and photograph it but I was only going to take two dark slides. That's a total of four negatives, or four exposures. I love this part of the world because it's just the middle of nowhere, or as close to the middle of nowhere as you can get in Southeast England. But what we weren't expecting was how much the area had changed when we got down there. There was a huge Amazon distribution depot so a lot of the places that we wanted to go, we couldn't get to because there were fences that had appeared and signs that saying, you cannot go here, trespassing. So we decided to go back and maybe just take some pictures of what we saw on the way home. It's like disarming a bomb. You put this in your chief. And you put the yellow filter over this. Make sure you get your fingers over the lens as well, because that really helps. And jog the camera when you're taking the picture. If you were considering a 5.4 camera, I would recommend this. My only criticism of this camera is the way you have to fold the bellows away isn't good when the bellows start to get old. It puts them under unnecessary strain.
One of the incredible things about 5.4 photography is that you can just extend the lens past its natural focal length and you get macro photography straight away. And because you've got this huge negative, I can take this little crab and take a picture of it where the crab is like twice, it is, twice the size it is in real life. There is a formula behind it and a couple of people noted that I didn't mention that in my previous 5.4 video. But all I'm going to do right now is as I've done an extension of one times its focal length, I'm just going to add an extra stop. Here you can see us both. We might have to cut this a little bit short because I don't really want to be using this beautiful camera in the rain. So it started raining and we decided to call it quits after just two pictures and having never found the jetty. I came here because I wanted to take some pictures of the old jetty and we couldn't make it from the other side so we were about to go home when I said, no, I don't want to go home. I'm going to find it and find it we did. So we made it, we found the pier, it looked amazing, and we took a couple of shots, which I think are gonna be really great. I'm still a bit jittery from walking along that wall, so yeah, I'm a bit of a pussy. Um, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And if you wanna buy me some film, there's a wish list in the description below. So until next week, happy shooting.